Hello, I'm Dr. Ron Eaglin, and today I want to talk to you about joins, actually specifically table joins in SQL. And uh, what we'll do is we'll start over here with this little database that I've got going here. And we have to have a little bit of understanding of the database relationships I have for this one. This is my music database. It's a very straightforward database. Over here we have the, uh, and I'm, I'm going to cover this real quick. I have this concept of an artist. An artist is, can be a band or a, or a individual musical artist that makes albums. So here I have these albums and they have an artist ID for and key back to the artists. So I'm going to do a few examples here. I'm going to use uh, Elton John and the Who. So Elton John might be the artist, the name here, and then Goodbye Yellow Brick Road might be the album. On that album, there'll be multiple songs. So um, just in the case of Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, um, View for a Friend, Love Lies Bleeding, Candle in the Wind, those would be songs that are on the album. And they have an album ID foreign key over here to the album's ID. Then one level deeper, you have musicians that play on these individual songs. And I'm using a relational join table called Instrument Played. The musician is related to the song by the instrument that they played on the song. And you could actually say it would be vocals or whatever. And I'll show you some examples of this. So that's putting it all together. Now, let, let's go and let's, uh, I put some data in here. And we're going to look a little bit at that data. First, I'm going to do a properly joined uh, connection of the artists, albums, and songs. So I'm going to actually look at this. And you can see I've got Elton John. Um, let me give us a little bit more room here. Elton John, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road being the name of the album, Funeral for a Friend slash Love Lies Bleeding, album, okay, it's album one, track number one. So I'm actually just taking this information from here. Now, this is joined. This has got joins that are properly done here. But what would happen if I went over here and I did this, just, um, just did the first line, select star from artists, albums, and songs, okay? If I hit execute for just that query, remember it's not doing this, the rest of the query, just that first part, you'll notice I've got a whole lot more entries here than just the individual songs and the artists. In fact, um, I can actually estimate how many I have simply by doing a query of selecting the counts from the three tables that were involved there. So if I execute that, I'll see that I have two, two, and seven. What I'm saying here is I have two artists, I have two albums, and I have seven songs. So if I were to do this query where I just select from here, I'm going to get, in this case, 28 different entries. And if I come over here, I'll show you that I have 28 different entries. However, when I do the joining conditions here, you can see that I actually only have seven. And it actually it makes sense. Each song belongs on an album which belongs to an artist. So what you really want to have is the same number of responses as you have songs. If we go back over to the database diagram, you can see that in the tree of artists, albums, and songs, songs points to albums, points to artists, so that for every song you're going to have an album and you're going to have an artist. So all you really need to see is the song and the album and the artist that go with them. Same thing with the albums and the artists here. Albums go to artists. And so if you were to look at just albums and artists, well, however many albums you have, you should have that many or fewer artists that you want to see in the query. So this is the concept of joining. Now, in this join, what I did is I used those foreign keys. So I actually did this in order. I had artists, which was the uh, lowest level of that tree, okay, the root, albums, which is the next level of the tree, and then songs, which is the next level of the tree. If you look at this, you'll see that I took the songs, album ID, which is a foreign key back to albums ID, and I set those equal. Okay, I then took the albums.artist ID, and I set that equal to the artist ID, the next level in the tree. Well, what's another way I could do this? You can use the join condition, which is one of the things in SQL. Now, this query and this query will be equivalent queries. However, this second query is going to give you a lot more power. Now, we'll show the power of this query as we get into some of the more advanced join conditions. But if you look at this, if I take this query, select star from artists, join albums on a join condition, then and I look at just that, I can execute that, and I can see the two artists, Elton John and the Who, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, and Tommy. And now if I go to the songs, 
Go one level deeper, I can see the Elton John with the songs, the Who with the songs that I had for those. And again, I'm back to the equivalent query, seven entries, okay, each individual song showing the album that goes with this. Now, that tree was a little bit more complex, and the, tr and the complexity of the tree that we had here is going to be kind of important here because I'm going to be looking at this multi-relational situation here where I have instrument played songs and musicians. Okay, well suppose I want to see everything there. Now what I've done here is I've set up a query that has the joining conditions that are the proper join conditions on essentially everything. So let's do that. Let's see what that does. Okay, and as you see, it's uh, in this case, I'm only looking at one song and the reason I'm only looking at one song is essentially because I've only got one song that I've entered artists or um, entered musicians for. So Dee Murray, Elton John, David Johnstone, Nigel Lawson, and David Henschel, who were the players on Funeral for a Friend, uh, Love Lies Bleeding, on the Goodbye Yellow Brick Road album by, that was uh, by Elton John. So, you can see the joins did actually go that next level. Now, let's look a little bit closer at just that specific part of the, um, not the artist in the album, but just the song forward. So let's look at this. This is the funeral for a friend, okay, D. Murray, okay, all the different pieces that go with that one song. Now, watch what happens if I do this, okay, if I do just this one, okay, I get a much, much larger thing here. Now, the reason is, is because when you do this, you get a cross product. Okay, the cross product, the cross product of artists, albums, and songs. You can get the dimension of the cross, cross product by looking at the number of dimensions of each of the individual fields and multiplying them. That was why the 2 plus the 2 times the 7 gave you the 28 in this situation. So you get a cross product. But the thing is, is you don't necessarily want a cross product. So you can get a very large cross product right here. Okay, when I throw in all those other entries, and I can easily count up what each of those entries is going to be just simply by putting a count in there and looking at that 700 and it, so one thing you can tell is this gets really big really fast if you don't put your correct join conditions in to limit it back down but let's try one thing here if I take this one query here okay, and I look at it it is going to have a lot of entries there if I go even further um, and I actually look at it this way just the one here where I'm going to have 700 entries. Suppose I actually delete the, the um, musicians. I'm going to delete the musicians, and the way I'm doing this is I'm going to delete all the musicians on the song Funeral for a Friend, Love, Life's Bleeding, because that's the only one I've entered them for. So I'm going to delete all these musicians. Now let's go back up and do that cross product here. Okay, this is all of them. If I execute, now I get nothing. If you notice, there's no returns. Well, why? Well, I just deleted all the musicians. That's zero. Now I have a cross product of a number times a number times a number times a zero times a number. Okay. Well, actually, I, de I deleted uh, out of the um, yeah, I actually deleted out of the, the uh, musician table. So, as you can see, times zero get, always gives you nothing down here. So I actually get nothing here. Okay. Now I can I have a, a store procedure which inserts them back, so I can execute that and it'll bring them back. And then when I come back up here and I run this, I'll get the cross product again. What I wanted to show you specifically with this, and I'm going to show you in uh, later lectures the power of the joins, because I'm only doing one type of join here. I haven't looked at left joins, right joins, inner joins, and outer joins, which do give you the ability to deal with the situation here, such as you know that when you ran this query that you have entries in these fields, when I delete the uh, instrument played piece, oops, get the whole thing here. When I delete this and I come back up here, you know that you have entries in here, and actually I can cheat and do this. I can do just this part of this. But suppose you want to see the query with the join conditions, but if there are no musicians in instrument played, you'd still like to see the artist albums and songs. Okay. We, can, we can't really do that in this condition here, but we can do that in the condition of using the joins. 
But what I do want you to see out of this is if you have tables with relationships and you want to get the correct data, you have to correctly apply join conditions. Thank you very much. Good programming.